Hey, I'm on TV. Am I famous? Am I famous yet? Are we there? Hey, we ran out of court. Quick, I'm being sabotaged. Anyway, hey, I'm Richard Marcella. Most of you know me. Some of you don't. The ones that don't, you're the lucky ones. Anyway. Look at that camera. You want to speak? I've been around too long. That's too close. Oh, too close. Anyway, I got involved in January 1980. I've been a hardcore hip activist. And I met Yusuf about 27, 28 years ago. Jack had his office in Van Nuys. And I uh, liked the guy. Everybody liked him. He was dedicated. And to have what happened to him at 54 years old, that's a crime. I don't know what happened. We went to, uh, before Dave passed away, there was a party. Kathy said, we're going to have a party at Dave's house. I said, I'll be there. i got to be there for that, absolutely. So he was there, looked healthy, looked strong, 54, didn't smoke cigarettes. I guess he ate a pretty decent diet. Are we good? Lighting right? Hello, Mom. I'll be home at 8. I won't be late. But anyway, I love Dave. Um, back in September... Back in September 95, we did a thing. Some of you know who Craig Rubin was, Craig X, a big hip activist out of UCLA, uh, been arrested, fighting for religious freedom. He knew the Supai down in the, in, the, in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, so he put together a volunteer thing. You go down there, you work two hours a day, they'll feed you, and you got the run of the Grand Canyon for the rest of the time. It's just two hours a day. So you get down there, you're doing something, you're getting four or five hours in. I did everything from fixing fences to washing dishes. And you know, it was from the heart. It was amazing. They took us in so well. So we left there and we gritted, we motor on into Las Vegas with the debtor playing a concert. And I'm going, wow, I need a miracle ticket. I need a miracle, who's got a miracle ticket? I got a miracle ticket, baby. Damn right. The last time they, the dead played Vegas before uh, 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 Jerry passed away, and the miracle ticket came from Hip Man Dave. He says, Richard, you know, I know you are. You dedicated. I can't. I want you. Out. I went, wow, Dave. And I went and I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> Way. And you still got in the show. And I still got in the show. <laughs> <laughs> when were you expecting me already? I'm a poor guy. You know, I've been involved in this for over half my life. Like I said, I got involved in January 1980. And the amazing thing, the amazing thing is that we're this movie. When I got involved in 80, I met Jack for the first time. And Captain Ed and the history of this. I'm writing a book, Confessions of the Marijuana Activist, and Dave's in it. God have Dave in there. You know, he's a very special person. Yusuf's in it. Really? Yeah, Yusuf, too. Wow. wow. Okay, anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Love y'all, guys. Hey, tell <laughs> we're going this battle, <laughs> tell him we're going to stick with it. Am I famous yet? No. I'm Tell them a little you know. bit about the 15 days you stayed with Mike. Oh, Mike. yeah. The ba yeah. Which time? I was on the front lawn in 1980. I was down I'm talking there for about when you and I did. I did yeah, back in 96. I was there for a lot forever, a lifetime. I question my sanity. Why am I here? I don't need to be there. I don't need the, the, the agitation. But I stayed with it for 15 days. You were there 31 days. Uh, the original, Larry Gore, in the 80 when we got involved, there was a gentleman, Larry Gore. He became my right hand man. I was Jack Harris' right hand man. We were the blind leading the blind. We knew we were doing God's work. And we forged forward. There isn't really a book. Well, how do you exactly do a marijuana movie? Well, uh, we don't really know because it hasn't been done a whole bunch. So we knew we were doing God's work and forged ahead. We made more mistakes than we made, made right. But by God, we didn't do it the three times in a row. I mean, you wouldn't do it three times in a row, you know you're crazy. We got time. 
All right, that's it. I'm signing off. Oh, and by the way, one other FYI, real quick. Starting in June of '91, I used to do. I started doing a TV show about marijuana. Hip for victory. Maybe you've heard of it. I did it ten years. I did 66 shows. And Michael Lem, who's in there, he did a TV show, first one ever, Time for Him, 1989 to 90. He did 10 shows, Time for Him. He was the first, and then because of him doing it, it was a spin-off, and he had on his 10th show Willie Nelson in studio, live. It was an amazing moment of history. And, and I met Willie, smoked pot with him. I was with Jack, George Clinton Johnson very distinguished lineup. TC, remember TC? He was a buddy of Willie, That's you know? the picture of me at, at, at TC. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. that Jessica made this big poster of. I was going to bring it today, but... Hey, Randy, you know, you know... But let me get the other ones. Okay, right anybody else want to talk about it? My story was the miracle. Someone's paper. coming up right here, Richard. Yeah, he was great. Love, love right there. Say something. Okay, us next, sucker. I mean, good luck. <laughs> Hello, my name is Avi. I'm not used to doing this. I've known Dave for about 21 years. I was uh, about 19, and I saw him standing on at AMPM collecting signatures for medical marijuana. And I'm like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I want to sign up. All right, so, and he gives me his card. I'm like. Hey, uh, this guy's got all the weed. <laughs> so, oh man, let's call him. So I call him up. He's like, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm like, I never seen any of these. <laughs> so all of a sudden, he tells me, Hey, do you want to work? I'm like, Okay. So I worked at the furniture store at Beds Plus on Van Nuys, and I worked the day. It was easier to work go on deliveries with Mike than it was to go on deliveries with Dave. And uh, you know, so I was happy to go on deliveries with Mike. I'm like, oh man, this is easier. I don't have to get yelled at. But Dave would be one of those people that would work until the wee hours of 1 a.m. and then go have a hemp festival at a, a Cypress Hill Smokeout or Bob Marley uh, Festival at the Long Beach Arena. And he'd always get his booth, have to be there early to get his booth set up and be the last booth to leave. He's like, Dave, everybody's left out of the place. I'm busy, I got sales to make. There's still people coming in. He's the last guy still there. That's, everybody's already packed up and gone. And he was always there for me. You know, I had cancer four years ago and he uh, would help get some CBD oils. He, and when I didn't have weed, he'd drop off some weed and he'd drop off some weed that Mike would grow. and. He would always take care of me, and he and there's some pictures of him when he came to our wedding in November, like in November 20th, and you know Dave was very, very about hemp, and he was probably put more dedication into just you know pushing book for Jack, and you know before anybody, even Mike says that you know back in the 70s they were putting initiatives for hemp. You know, so Dave was already at the forefront before Jack Hare was even smoking pot. And Dave would always put his best foot forward to help somebody else, you know. He would give a ride to George Clayton Johnson. That's how I met George Clayton Johnson. I didn't know that. Oh my God, this is the guy from Twilight Zone. Oh my God, this is the guy from the Twilight Zone. Started asking all these questions, you know. And, and then you're sitting there with Jack Hare. Now, there was a time when Dave took me to the, I think it was the Galaxy Gallery. Uh, it's a pot, uh, the bong shop, right? Okay, so yeah, they uh, had uh, Chong there, his son, and uh, I think one of the radio stations. It was live, so we go down there, and we're sitting there with Jack, Tommy Chong, and uh, his son, and I'm smoking pot with Tommy Chong. And I'm sitting there, and then another time, I'm sitting there with, you know, Jack here. Jack wanted to pass me the pipe, but I looked at the pipe, and it's a wooden pipe. You know Jack's pipe. You know, he has this legendary pipe. It was all slobbered on. I'm like, okay, no. Thank you, but, you know, I sat in the van. Dave would always, you know, after the, like, Cypress Hill shows that Jack would show up at, or any of the events, they would give him a ride. They would be the one 
giving everybody a ride everywhere and anywhere, help somebody out. I mean, he, you know, he was, the, the, he always said, the buck stops here. I'm busy. I'm all right, we're out heading to the uh, Queen Mary, me and my lady. Hey, we need, we need directions, Dave. I'll call you back. Hang up. Nobody calls back. We're like, oh my God, we need, we're, we're like, you want us to drive off into nowhere land? Dave, I need to call you. Please, pick up the phone. I'm busy, I'm busy. And it clicked. And I'm like, just one second, Dave. You know, and... It, yeah, and you know, it's like Dave, you know, he had my car one time in his van. And I said, Dave, you just hit my car. He's like, look, are you coming with me? Are we going to go in what? And he just drives off. And I'm like, and the guy is sitting there in his car. He's like, dude, do you know that guy? Do you need my information? I'm like, no, I don't need your information. I already know where this guy lives. Okay? And I'm like, Dave, you hit my car. You didn't even apologize to me. He's like, look, look, it's, I don't have time for all this. Here's, you know, whatever it was, you know? And But Dave would always be there, you know, no matter what. He, If you didn't have any food, he'd take you out to like, you know, the uh, norms or you go to Andrew Sidney's. You know, I got into all these great Cypress Hill smokeouts and Bob Marley festivals because I was uh, going with Dave. He'd that's sneak right. us in. Yep. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Kathy was there, you know. Smoking fest. Oh, that's right. That, you know, and oh, I'd always crazy. sneak, you know, I would want to work, but I would always want to go sneak off with some bands and go smoke. And I come back and Dave is still there, you know, talking, pulling in business. The last guy, right? The last guy, and Kathy was working there in that booth. You know, the I've known. All the spots were empty, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, everybody was gone. Everybody's already left the Bob Marley Festival. Bob Marley's already left the festival, and he left it a long time ago. But Dave was still there. Now, here's one thing: is that when Dave passed away, I saw him in the last few days. I went and saw him at the hospital, and he. Um, he wasn't doing well, you know. I looked at him, he's like, it's just death. And I'm like, Dave, dude, come on, man. I love you, man. And he made, you know, she saw him. And then I, and then he's like, I, he started passing out a little bit. And I told him, dude, do you know Donald Trump resigned? He's like, are you kidding? <laughs> oh my god! He sat up like no, like oh my god! You have energy? Where did you get that? And all of a sudden, like hey, you're alive. And I told him, yeah, it's taking it like off. Oh. All right, so I come back the next day, and he's telling me get. He's like, all right, you gotta get me out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, what, Dave? He's like, yeah, you, all right, Nate, come on, let's go. You guys take me out of here right now. I gotta go to the hospital. I'm like, Dave, you're in the hospital. Right. All right. And he's like, no, I need to go now. I have insurance. I'll pay you. And I'm like, Dave, I can't take you out of the hospital. I was like, okay, so here's the keys. He's like, I can't drive. I'm like, I guess we're not leaving. I said, you expect me to go to jail for murder and kidnap? You know, oh, you know, I don't ex know what you want me to do. He's like, I said, no. He's like, no. I said, look, Donald Trump was already assassinated. He's like, I heard. <laughs> and, I'm, I, and, uh, and, and then, you know, I try to talk to him. And then all of a sudden, like, you shut up. And I'm like, oh, Dave's back to so, normal. <laughs> oh, look, Dave's in, uh, is feeling better today. And he, uh, you know, uh, he died, he passed away on 419. You know, I went over to his house around two o'clock, and I saw him. You know, and I said I'd come back around. You know, a little bit, and then I get a phone call, and then he's gone. And it was like around what four o'clock, four o'clock. So you know, it was almost 420. And so I th I said to myself, I was like, I know what Dave did. Dave left early because he wanted to get up into uh, up into the uh, eternal uh, spot where he can get a booth set up uh, and go meet up with Jack Hare and, and yeah before 420 starts you know he wanted to make sure he gets the best spot you know because there's business to be made you know he knows that you know he can get the best spot he can go meet up with Jack Hare and all his good friends George Clayton Johnson you know before the 420 festival starts 
so he had to leave a day early. And you know, <laughs> if you know Dave, Dave would have, you know, he's always the first one there and he's the last one out of there. So I think in everything I've known of Dave, of, there were good times, there were bad times. And I think if anything, Dave was a humanitarian. He cared more about pushing the hemp and the legalization of it and wanted to uh, um, put a better place. And if you know Dave, if he went to the Dead Show, he wasn't sitting in the seat. He was hopping around. He was always hopping around. You know, he never just sat still at the seat. Like, no, dude, he would dance around, go meet up with people and hang out with them. You know, he was grumpy. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you that when Dave was grumpy, he was grumpy. It's, I'm busy. I'm busy. But you know, I'd say he was one of the best friends, and I'm so glad he made it to my wedding. And I, you know, I I I, I think you know, 419 would have been as perfect. You know, for somebody that's suffering cancer, I told Dave. I said, please, is there a way he can leave the chemo away. I was like, you told me, you taught me so much of staying away from the system, you know, and relying on organic stuff. But, you know, I think the system scared him. And we have to learn from that because, you know, I think the CBD oils were doing amazing for Dave. In the last day that I saw him, he, he was doing fine. It's the chemo that ruined it, you know? And, 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 I, and I wanted to say that because I've suffered from cancer and they try to trick me into doing chemo and I didn't do chemo, I did four weeks of radiation and I did tons of CBD oils, which Dave referred me to Valerie up at um, WAM, up in uh, Santa Cruz, I think it's Women and Men's uh, Alliance for Marijuana, and Dave referred me to them and you know he put a good word in for me and they really helped me out and I'm still here. And I tried to, you know, I had testicular cancer. And it took one of, you know, my testicles. But they gave me everything works. We were happy. I got kids. But if it wasn't for Dave trying to push, you know, all the knowledge into me about him. And what I've learned from that guy, I think that, you know, I regret some of the bad times that we've had. And I really do. And I wish I could tell Dave I'm sorry for many different things. And I was, yeah. <laughs> well, don't worry. We, 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 we've had our differences, and I've gotten my my share back. But, um, I love Dave, and I wish he was here right now. And I know he, if he was here, he'd say, "Ah, man, it's spark of a joint. It's only life. Everybody dies." You know, just celebrate life. Don't mourn them, celebrate life. You know, because those are the moments that you have right now and remember the good times that you had. Remember all the bags you bought from him or wallets or you know, or all the knowledge that you would just stand there with at a booth and tell you. Because Dave was, and, and, or what, you know, furniture sales. You go to deliver furniture, we were delivering furniture. Mike, what time would we be delivering furniture till? Mike. What time will we be delivering furniture till at Bed Plus? 2 a.m. 3 a.m. Whatever, yeah. And, and Dave would ring their doorbell at whatever time at night and just show up. And they'd be like, you were supposed to be here like two hours ago. And Dave would come up with any excuse, didn't you know? He was a businessman. He, had, he started out with a waterbed store. You know, he, 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 he told me everything. He started out doing business at... Uh, 20s, um, you know, he got, you know, business to be, I told him, I said, man, I don't know if you about being a good boss, <laughs> but he's like, the buck stops here, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, but I think, uh, overall, I more enjoyed him being a friend, as a, you know, he was family, literally family, we loved Meg, my mom knew Meg, my grandma knows, uh, no, my grandma knows Dave, you know, like we delivered a bed to my grandma. You know, was, I've delivered many beds for Dave. And you, oh, one more story. Before, one time we were on the freeway. So Dave had this little truck. 
We have the bed stuck between our heads like this. Dave's on his cell phone. I'm like, Dave, please. No, I'm a terrible good. fucking driver. Oh, please, don't even start with it. Here we go. Let's go. Terrible. And, and a horrible driver at best. Oh, God. I think Kathy has something to say after night, after this. She, 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 she's got, um, okay, but yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he was, you know, this one time we're do on a delivery, and I said, dude, it's not safe to be on yourself. I was like, will you shut up? You know, I'm, I'm on the phone. I'm like, dude, let me take care of the phone calls. Like, And, and they were almost like swipe swiping his family in a minivan. <laughs> okay? And I'm like, dude, you almost killed him. And the, and, and the bed's between us, like this. <laughs> okay? And, 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 and he's like this. And you couldn't even see out the rear view mirror because there was no rear view mirror. It was only beds. Oh. And there's beds on top of the truck. <laughs> and, and, and I'm telling him, please get off the freaking cell phone when you drive. And this guy never listened. He was so stubborn. And when he... Uh, uh, he was a daredevil. Oh, yeah, Dave didn't care. As long as we got to the business and wherever we were making the stop. But Dave was amazing. And, you know, I regret, you know, some of those times that we've had arguments, and which were a lot of them. But, you know, that's because that's family. I think, you know, if you don't have real feelings and talk to people and show that you care, that means you don't care. You know, if you don't have good times and bad times, then you have really no times. It's just like whatever, you know. But I think with Dave, it was more family because I've known this guy for so many years and so many levels. I mean, I worked for years having the bed at the bed store, you know. But it was better to doing uh, deliveries with Mike than anybody. I'll tell you. <laughs> Anyways, I love Dave and. He's gonna be great, you know. Just remember where he is. Remember the hemp movement. Always keep the hemp going, you know. Let's not let this. And one thing, Dave was not very happy on this Prop 64 because he saw there was a lot of things that were not in it correctly. That more benefits the big cor corporations and some of the people that he helped put together and helped inspire and push their initiatives, kind of let Dave down in some ways, you know, and Dave said, I'm not voting for it. He voted no. He voted no on legalization. Yeah, we all you know, and, yeah, and I yeah. voted no too. Yeah. And there's a reason for that because it, it's, it's greed. For greed. Yeah. It wasn't legalization, it was recriminalization. Yeah, there you go. Recriminalization. And, and Dave was not about that. Dave was about, no. Jack had something else in mind, and it was, this plant needs to be freed on all levels, okay? We need to stop using these, like, not these GMO products and start using the hemp products. And I'm not talking about getting the pesticide herb. I'm talking about getting the non-pesticide, the non-GMO stuff, and getting the hemp products we built in this country. You know, Dave wants this, would want this more than ever now, and so would Jack. So that's all I gotta say.